copy. Hello, everyone. How are you? How are you, Margaret? Or Tiamat? Like, which do you prefer? Do you prefer Margaret or Tiamat? I think actually you told me Margaret, but I, I don't remember, to be honest. Also, we have a couple of uh, new emotes on the way, because I know you how much you guys like emotes. And uh, Trash keeps making them for us, so. I assume you don't want me to call you Marge, right? Like, I can't call you short, like, like Margaret, but Marge. I can't. I I can't. I can't call anyone Maggie. That's uh. That's I had a bad experience once with that name, so I uh. I'm not. <laughs> oh goodness, please no. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not a Marge. That's fair. Sorry, as you will. Dog and uh, dog and pony commencing, guys. Hey, everybody! It's Anne. Welcome back to a to a late edition. Sorry, we had a lot of stuff to talk about this morning, um, and I was rushing for time, so I'm afraid we started a little late. I'm my apologies. I'm going to make an effort to not, you know, continue the late trend. Um, I do not want to be on Reaper time. TM. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll, we'll make an effort to get on at a timely manner next time. That's my, my little personal resolution, right? It's not a New Year's resolution, obviously. I'm quite late. But it could be a birthday resolution, because my birthday is this weekend. So, there we go. Uh, how is everybody? Stephanie and Margaret, thank you for the resubs. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I thought, I thought we'd, I mean, I ordered some Rockies because I wanted some Rockies, and then I thought I was going to do a Rocky and NMM, and I might still do that, but then I thought, well, I've got all this darn treasure pile and treasure piles are so difficult to paint in nmm so maybe i should just paint a treasure pile in nmm and put a different colored rocky on top of it i have more than one rocky so this is all cool and painting this treasure pile in nmm is going to introduce basic concepts that i can then use to paint a different rocky in nmm so that is the dealio uh hello planer yeah i mean i always end late right let metho file you always get at least an hour Sometimes you get an hour and a half. <laughs> so, who knows? Yes, the Rockies are adorable. Alrighty. Cool. Well, all right. Well, let's jump back right in. And yes, happy almost birthday. Well, thank you. Thank you. I am, even though I am an old person, um, I still love birthdays. So, um, I think I'm going to be that way, like, pretty much until I'm 99. Um, but, yes. Yeah. My oldest birthday is today. Huh? What was that? So my uncle's birthday is actually today. Uh, mine is this weekend, so it's a little. I'm a little early. I'm, mine is always the first day of summer. This year it's Father's Day also because when it falls on a Sunday, it's also Father's Day. But it makes it hard to go out to go out to dinner for your birthday because all the restaurants are booked. Ah, yay! Yes, yes, yes. Happy early birthday, Anne. Exactly. Alrighty, cool. Well, let's like pop into this and start base coating it, and uh, I'll talk about base coating colors for you guys. So let's see here. Let me just make a little note there. All right, cool. So um, you can use the NMM Gold Triad for this, obviously, uh, but you can also use a selection of other colors. When it comes to painting NMM Gold, you, you really can use almost any yellow, any brown. Well, not any brown, but it, you really can get away with a lot is really the point. Let me see. What Do I have Palomino in here? I do. Awesome. Do, 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 do. Let's just grab a bunch of colors that can be used for NMM gold. <laughs> My bag of paint is uh, fighting me at the moment. Yay! There we go. That's another good one. And yeah, we'll play around with that later. So, we have a bunch of colors. Um, let me just make sure. Bonfire of candles for your 50s cakes. I think we should just get a tiki torch at that point, right, Frances? <laughs> a birthday tiki torch. Let me just get these in focus. Uh... Oh, is Arizona having fire fires? Yeah. 
Phoenix isn't surrounded. Well, just up the road, actually, there's a forest preserve. So I'd be sad if that burned. I drove through it on my way out west, and uh, it was very pretty. Alrighty. So here we've got a selection of colors that can all be used as a basis for NMM Gold. Um, we're not talking highlight. We're not talking shadow. This is just like a basic color to work your gold off of. Uh, probably the most classic one is the NMM Gold, um, which unfortunately I could not uh, dig out quickly. Um, but NMM Gold 9302 is also uh, a very good color for this. And uh, Palomino Gold is the one that we used to recommend. Like before we got our NMM triads, we we um, we used the Palomino Gold triad, which also has Chestnut Gold as a shadow and uh, Buckskin Pale as a highlight. And that is perfectly possible to pull off a passable um, NMM Gold with that. You can use all of these. And really the question that you should ask yourself before deciding which, uh, good morning, Inara, which color to start your NMM with or which color to base your NMM off of is going to be what other colors you're using. So if you are using something like Null Pelt, which is a, you know, kind of, it's a muted green, right? It's not clear green or anything. Um, you may want to use a slightly more muted gold to do your yeah, a slightly more muted yellow to do your NMM gold because it's uh, not going to clash that way. Whereas if you try to do this, those don't look quite as good together. So you kind of want to look at what is my other color that I'm using and am I going to go bright or am I going to go muted and choose accordingly. If you want a muted gold, Palomino gold is good. If you want an even more muted gold, green ochre, which is 9128 is uh, meant to be kind of a bronzy or uh, very muted uh, golden tone. So it's not technically a true gold, but if it's the most yellow thing on your model and you're applying it in places that would be gold, it will still read like gold. And you can use that entire triad. It's actually uniform brown, which is one of my favorite colors of all time, 9127. Um, and then 9128, which is the green ochre midtone, and then 9129, which is faded khaki. Uh, those are all great and utilitarian colors to own. A lot of people kind of pass by those because people reach for bright colors and don't re reach for muted colors. But then when you want to do something that isn't super bright, then, you know, those colors are actually very, very useful. So let's see here. Just looking and seeing. Nope. Everybody is just kind of trickling in. No questions yet. Awesome. So lantern yellow and candlelight yellow, of course, you both know, you all know from bones, you know, both of them from bones is what I meant to say. Um, one of them is obviously orangier and one of them is a lot lighter. Um, this one has white in it. Doesn't really matter. They both cover well. You want to have a decent coverage color for your base of your gold usually as yellows can be uh, kind of titchy that way. So that's also why ogre skin is in here. Ogre skin is kind of like if I want to say if these two paints had a love child, it would be that. <laughs> So ogre skin is kind of in the middle and ogre skin. And I meant to mention this yesterday. If you guys liked mustard yellow from HD, ogre skin is the closest thing to replace it. So, um, I don't remember if mustard yellow is one of the ones that we brought back, but it was a really good base coat for yellow. Um, and it's a, also anything with ochre in it, because this is one of those colors, uh, is really good for, for usually for NMM gold, but this is a very saturated color. All of these are very, very bright colors. So, you can, this is not to say you cannot use them on a muted model, but if you do, you've got to knock them down with a bit of brown, which you're probably going to do anyway, but they're very saturated, so it can take a bit more if you're working with a muted model. So shadows. Obviously, you can use NMM Gold Shadow 9301, and uh, you can also mix in any of the following. Any of these guys, or... Wait, there's another color. Where did it go? Um, technically, you could use, where is it? Darn it. Whenever I need my rich leather, it just runs away. I swear, this paint disapparates instantly when I need it. I'm to the point where I'm going to start acquiring, like, multiple bottles of it. There we go. Perfect. And we'll stuff that back here. Excellent. So any of these colors can be used, uh, can be added to these to create a shadow. And uh, some of them can be used in pure form for your darkest shadow for NMM gold. So 
For highlights on NMM Gold, I always reach for NMM Gold highlight. It does not matter. I will usually add, if I want a really brighter, a little bit brighter highlight, I will reach, uh, add a, a, a drop of Lantern Yellow into there or maybe Candlelight if I need it to be just a little more intense. Um, but so I have all these options for, for midtones, all these options for shadows, but my highlight remains the same. Yeah, actually, Francis, uh, we, I try to be consistent with naming. I try to never go over three words and we, and only allow three words when they're shorter, uh, ideally, although sometimes that doesn't work. Um, and those, and that's when they have to shrink the font a little to make it work make it fit on the bottle and everybody's growly at me. Yeah, well, Inara, that's because Palomino is a secret clear bright. It's a single pigment color. So, ta-da! That's why it's useful for so many things. Um, well, yeah, but your standard yellow mustard mathophile is, is really, you know, I grew up in Wisconsin. So, you know, I was in the middle of the Midwest, and the only mustard that was acceptable mustard there was the yellow, you know, freakishly yellow mustard. So... And they all do tend to be kind of ochre you know? Alrighty. Ha, Faraga. Nice plug. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that, I mean, Heinz Yellow Mustard, right? That's what my family grew up with. Like, I think if you're, if you grew up around the Midwest, like, or like in various other places, like you just got used to yellow mustard as being your mustard, especially as a kid, because as a kid, you often don't reach for the brown, weird, you know, country Dijon wine mustard. You know, you reach for the yellow stuff. That's what you do. Um, yeah, see, asterisky, there you go. Um, clear brights and like there's uh there is on my Patreon in our, but otherwise I've, I've just talked about them here and there. Uh, I don't talk about the secret clear brights much because a lot of them are canceled. So, because a lot of them were in HD. So I just don't go there. Um, I will say that uh, the ones that are canceled or less than ideal are being reissued uh, or issued for the first time in the Bones 5 paint sets. The Oxide Red, Oxide Brown, Oxide Yellow, those are all clear brights. And uh, the Oxide Yellow is going to replace Palomino because it's a little bit of a heavier pigmented, um, more intense version of the, of the yellow ochre color. So... Although this, I find, is still much, uh, much useful because, again, it's not quite as intense. It's got a little bit of, uh, it's, a, it's useful for a more muted color, I think, a little bit. But yeah, so Palomino is not, like, unuseful, but if you want a much more intense clear bright version, like, true clear bright version of Palomino, because if you didn't know it, all the clears are extremely highly pigmented as well. Um, so yeah. Anne's Patreon command is not working anymore. Justin, beat up the bot. Yes. I'm sorry, say that again? Beat up the bot. Make it make it issue my Patreon. Apparently, uh, Planer is trying to, to make it say my Patreon, and it's not doing it. Hmm, okay. All right, so let's decide what we're going to do. I think I want this Rocky to be pretty bright. He's He's got his treasure chest. He's got a... I can paint the treasure chest brown and give him some neutral in there. Hmm. So my choice of gold is going to be fueled by my choice of Rocky. I was kind of thinking that we do this Rocky traditional and do him red. Are you guys up for a red Rocky? If we do a red Rocky, then I know what I have a better idea of what color I want to start with. Though I think, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. The ends Patreon works. Yay. Sweet. Alrighty. We'll do a traditionalist Rocky. Excellent. Well then, since we're going red and I tend to go with a very saturated red, I can go with a more saturated yellow. And that means that uh, I will go with, let's go with, actually, let's go with Ogre Skin because I'm working with this color this month um, on my Patreon uh, $5 PDF. So I can use this for a reference photo on there as well. Let us put these Man, I'm going to keep those around. All right, so ogre skin, not as orangey of a gold. And that's another thing to keep in mind. So, all right, you guys have heard me. If you've read any of my $5 PDFs on the Patreon or you have heard me talk about um, the color wheel and you choosing colors any time before this, um, since we are going red, we want to get contrast, right? So we want to push our colors away. Where's my little color wheel? Ah, oh, there it is. 
It's one of the only ways I'll use the color wheel. I actually just put out a $5 video on this on my Patreon, which is, of course, patreon.com slash painting big. If you missed the link in chat, there is one. Um, but the, the way to think about the way I often utilize the, the color wheels, if I'm choosing colors, I don't want the colors to be too close together on the color wheel. So if I'm doing a red Rocky and I'm doing, and I choose a yellow orange, those are a little bit closer together on the color wheel. And that makes it harder to get good contrast. But if I choose a color that's not as orange, then I can, let me see if I can find a good, uh, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. So essentially by taking this away from a very orangey yellow, which is probably actually between these, um, and I'm putting it more firmly toward a yellow orange to yellow, because this is actually not too orange. It's got a bit of greenish next to it, next to these actually. Um, so by not taking a color closer to red, we can get more contrast. So then in looking at these two, I think this is the least red. It actually is a little bit of brownish because of the ochre. So that's why I'm removing these guys from play right now. And we're starting with this because that means I get maximum contrast uh, out of my red dragon and my gold uh, coins. I suppose we could also do silver coins, but that would get really complicated really fast. So usually when you're doing treasure piles, you should probably pick a predominant color of NMM or whatever. And then if you're going to pick out little individual coins and in like silver or platinum or whatever, then do it that way. Um, otherwise it's just going to be too darn hard. <laughs> There's just no way. Um, so yeah. Do, 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 do. Um, Mathophile, I mean, when you do NMM, you're already, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do, uh, do shiny scales on the dragon. I said I was going to do an NMM Rocky later, but I was thinking a gold Rocky specifically because people, uh, would, uh, need it or, or a silver Rocky. Um, I haven't decided on the dragon yet. I'm not even going to talk, talk about it because I haven't decided. <laughs> so I always do dragon scales that said, if I'm doing them in a color, my dragon scales always look a little bit shiny because I always, almost always bring it up to pure white. For a young dragon, you'd get, probably have a pure white anyway. Uh, like have a shiny, shinier scales anyway. I think I, didn't I do a video on like painting NMM red armor? I'm pretty sure I did at some point. It seems to like be in my head somewhere. But who knows? Like at this point, we've been doing this for how long, Justin? Like a year and a half? Two years? A pretty long time, yeah. A very, very long time. Um, so I can't even remember what I've done at this point. I'm just going to continue to do it. Oh, yay. Yeah, but Mathophile, you, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Because if you think about it, if with a little dragon playing in them, these coins would not be like running in patches of silver, gold, platinum, and copper. They'd you know, probably be a predominant color and then they'd have speckles of everything else. I'm just choosing to go gold because that is going to be an easy way to paint it straight out the gate. And chances are little Rocky is, you know, he's a, he's a pretty high, highfalutin dragon. I think that uh, he probably has a decent treasure pile. I mean, little dragons that have all silver in their treasure piles get made fun of by other little dragons. So pretty sure Rocky's a high class guy and he's got a lot of gold in here. Now we're going really saturated with this. And I mentioned before that you could add a little bit of brown to your yellow to take it down a bit. Because right now, this is more yellow than gold actually is. If you look at photos of gold, gold's really weird. It does tend to echo the environment that it's in um, as far as picking up colors from the environment, just like any metal will. Uh, but it does tend to just not be quite this yellow. So I'm going to decide on a shadow color. Since I'm going so intense I'm and so yellow... I'm probably going with rich leather or russet brown. If I wanted to take this gold more reddish, then I would use ruddy leather instead because this is a very red leather, right? Red, reddish brown. But remember, we already decided we didn't want to go orange. So that means those colors are not as good as something that's a little more neutral. So rich leather is almost greenish. Russet brown is a definite, you know, warm, dark brown. This is the burnt umber of the MSP world. If I go black and brown, that's probably too much. I usually, with NMM, only use black and brown for like uh, glazing in dark shadows after I've done mixing because there's so much black in this, it's going to take this green right away. Remember, black plus yellow equals green. So, and the color wheel will even show you this because if you go yellow and you add black, you get green. So, the color wheel will remind you of these things. 
So it's one of these two. So let's see. I'm going to do a quick... I'm going to mix a little bit of rich leather in there. Just one drop. I've got like maybe six drops of um, ogre skin in there right now. So I just really want to take this yellow down just a little so it starts looking a little more complex and a little bit richer and then just a tad more muted. It's still really, really saturated. But now if we take here and we compare, here's a drop of the original. Yep, there we go. So you can see that it's knocked it, knocked it down just a little bit. It's made it a little bit more complicated. It's not so obviously yellow. So I can start putting this on and kind of uh, assess it. But first, I think I want to have my shadow colors ready because the best way to do this, I think, will be going to be to wet blend it. So because it's a big, broad area with only a little bit of texture. So I'm going to get this out, my russet brown. I'm going to get out my rich leather, those colors. So I kind of have two shadows here, and that's for a reason. I want a general shadow uh, for the NMM, but then I also need a darker, a dark shadow. Um, uh, because if you remember the thing about making something look shiny is putting a bright highlight next to a dark shadow on it. That's what you, makes, um, that's what makes things look shiny is the juxtaposition of, of very light because you know, the, the, um, shininess is going to pick up the light source, whatever light source you have, and it's going to reflect it back very bright. Um, and then a dark, dark shadow. It just tends to travel that way. Um, let me see here. Uh, there we go. Go good. Red armor was not a drought. Yeah, you're right, Jedi Jared. That was right. I'm, you know, sometimes I think I'm losing my mind. Sometimes I'm right. <laughs> it's kind of a Wednesday. Like, it's not a Monday. It, I feel better than a Monday, but it's definitely a Wednesday. It's that day that's in the middle of the week and you're like, arg, we're so far from the weekend. And yet we are closer than we used to be, so we must be optimistic about it. All right, so then we've got our NMM. Uh, highlight. Now remember, also I mentioned, if I want this to be a little bit more intense, because right now looking at these two, this is a lot more intense and saturated than this. So what I can do is, and also to make these play together, is I can put a drop of ogre skin into this. Boop. Do, 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 do. There we go. There, now those colors work a lot better together. They're a lot more in tune with each other. So that's good. Now I'm gonna actually grab some water, mix up my rich leather, get everybody, get all of this stuff to the consistency you want it and the color you want it before you start painting all your stuff on. You want to be able to just grab it and go and you want it a little bit thinned because you want it to stay at a good consistency but you don't want it too thin. One thing, if you're working with Master Series and you want a wet blend and you're not working with high coverage colors, uh, one thing you can do is just put down a base coat first. And I often will do this. We'll see how much this covers. I may need to add a little bit more. Um, well, actually, it's not bad. Usually colors with a lot of um, yellow oxide or yellow ochre in them cover very well because it's just a characteristic of those oxides that they are high coverage. So yeah, I'll put down a layer of this and then we're going to start wet blending over the top of that. Let me grab my glasses. I haven't needed them because this base is so big, but now we're getting into it. Uh, yeah, but you can do that at the end, Mathophile. The nice thing about, about that sort of thing, about adding in the color reflections from, from this other stuff, is that once I have my NMM all down, and I kind of, I do have to keep in mind that this uh, area near Rocky is going to be shadowed, right? So I do definitely want to introduce a shadow there. But if you want to introduce a bit of a color reflection from his red scales, you can do that at the end by just building a glaze of that red and putting it over the top of the uh, coins closest to Rocky. The glaze, uh, glazing is, is a good way to take uh, pick up a bit of color from the environment and things. It's really nice because you can make it as subtle or as overt as you want. If you do do it subtle, you can always add another layer. You can tune it really easily. <laughs> And some people would do that straight up instead of painting everything, but I, I'd i rather highlight and shade all these coins, um, get my basic highlight sh shades, uh, highlights and shades down, and then uh, work the, uh, the environment colors in from there. And I'm just going to paint right over this little dwarven mug. We can paint it a different color if we want to. 
since you're trying to get all these coins down, and you notice I'm using a flat brush, it's a it's a torn up brush, it's my mixing brush, so I don't mind doing this. I don't mind doing the dab, um, the dabbing motion and crushing my brush uh, as I'm trying to get in the nooks and crannies of all of these coins. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot more efficient when you've got something like this where you've got sort of maybe a dagger here and a mug there and a, you know, all of the treasure piles in the world have this kind of thing, right? They've got this mass of coins and then um, they have a couple of extra little things mixed in for color accents or because, you know, dragons like variety. And really when you see those little things, that's what you should be thinking of is color accents. Is like, this is an opportunity to paint something a different color other than gold or silver or whatever your little dragon is sitting on. Do, 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 do. And now we're to the point where I need a thing with sticky tack on it. We'll use my, uh, I have a lot of veterinary uh, meds from my various pets. And I also keep my giant blob of sticky tack on this one, so. Let me grab some sticky tack from my giant blob. And we can do this. And put it right up under the camera and get a nice focus on it. Get this out of the picture so we actually get a nice focus on it. There, I think, right? We have, do we have a, it looks like we don't have a nice focus on it. Come on now. There we go, much better. Sweet. Reaper, Reaper Peeps is good or Reaper Rights. I say Reaper Peeps often. Um, how would you add in the reflection of a... Okay, that's already got that one. I wouldn't actually use the um, a bit of orange uh, meth file. I actually would take the red and glaze it. That's... Um, I think that's uh, a little bit more effective because if you take the direct color of the thing, you are thinning it down, so it will still turn the coins um, orange, but it'll be like the exact color uh, color of the red dragon that you're using to glaze that in and so it it will be more realistic to do it that way rather than to mix uh, mix a color I find glazing just gives a slightly better effect in many cases it'll be close but it does it is a slight difference <laughs> hot dog see the mustard the mustard thing all right just checking to make sure I got all you guys all your questions this is a lot of yellow. It's a lot of yellow. Blame, blame the sculptor. Oh, there's a little pearl necklace here or bead necklace if you want to paint it different colors. This is also a time where you can kind of note little details like that. And think about what you might do to them. All right. The paint is still wet, but we don't really care. So now you want to look at this as a mass, right? Now you want to look at it like, where are my shadows? Where are my highlights? And you also kind of want to think about where Rocky is on here. So let's see. Rocky is here. His chest is here. I don't have him fully assembled yet, but that is okay. His little head goes there. So as far as light sources go... Do I have my light inadvertently on? No, I don't. All right. Um, we kind of have to look at it and go, all right, if there's an up upward light source, then these vertical areas here and the area right under Rocky is going to be shadowed. We're going to have a shadow under the tail there, shadow under the paw here. So first you want to block out where your obvious shadows are. And if I'm assuming a light source that's more or less coming down from above, then that's where it would be. So let's just do that. Let's put in a shadow then around the edge. We'll kind of make a note. I'm gonna grab part of my shadow and kind of uh, block it in under his tail so that I know where it is. I'm gonna stick my brush right under there. Since his tail does project out over the uh, coins and just kind of block it in. Then we'll ah, pick him up and his head will roll on the floor but we won't care because we're mostly concerned with coins today. Yeah, Captain Crunch cereal. Hey Rex, good to see you. 
I did I did actually drop his head on the floor, so I probably should retrieve that before I like step on it. Or roll my chair on it, or you know, do something else irreparable to the rocky head since I only have one. There it is. It is just one of those days. Some days you're always dropping your phone and your miniatures on the floor. This is why I have a rug underneath my desk that is uh, easy to makes miniature parts easy to see. He needs a funny pirate hat. So we should do a conversion. Should we do a conversion, Declearman? Should I make him a pirate hat and an eye patch? That would be kind of fun. All right, so we've got our shadow. See, right? That's 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 good right there. That reminds us. It's not necessarily the color we're gonna stay um, with that shadow because it is really warm. Hmm. Maybe I want to cool that down. I'm gonna get out my black and brown. So shadows tend to be a little bit cooler. This is not always the case. If he's in firelight, for example, you'd get warmth in the shadows. Uh, unless you were also outside in the firelight. Um, usually the ambient kind of bluish color that we perceive in is uh, from blue sky in the evening or daylight. So I'm going to just actually bring in some darker brown in here. I'm just going to stipple it in. And if it goes a little green, that, that'll that make it cooler. This is going to be cooler because it's got black in it. So essentially it's uh, going to mute out this yellow. It might take it slightly green. And it's definitely not going to be warm. Like that that shadow that I initially put on definitely was warm. It, it was a little orangey almost, right? So, but for a, a real shadow where we want that tail to really look like it is casting a realistic shadow, we want it to be cooler. We don't want a lot of warmth there because it wouldn't be, right? If you look at a shadow, like look at the shadow right under here, it's grayish and cool. So you've got to keep that in mind for realistic shadows. So I'm going to keep using my black and brown then. And this isn't going to be the shadows on the gold that's out here, but it is going to be the near, near to rocky shadow. And we're going to lay down some of that dark color. Then we're going to pick up some of our other color. And I'm going to continue using this huge brush because uh, I, I don't want it to pick out any of these little coins necessarily individually. I want to be able to just kind of blend the whole thing together. And when I feel like I've got maybe too much dark brown, I rinse out my brush, grab a bit more paint, and then I can come in again right next to it and kind of smoosh it back. Smooshing. We're smooshing today, guys. Wet blending. Wet blending on a textured surface. Use a large brush. And you have lots of room, which is nice. So you can see maybe why I'm setting this up before I've glued Rocky in place. It lets me get this edge uh, with plenty of room. I don't have to worry about sticking my brush under the dragon. I can just kind of work it before I put him in. And I can always touch it up. If I find that my shadow has gotten too wide once I put him on, I can always take my gold and reduce it. But as you can see, of course, the nice thing about this brush is that I can get between coins and make it a convincing shadow. There we go, there we go. So that's a nice, you can see that's a nice, uh, shading is coming up really nicely. Adventurers hunt serial dragons, insert pun here. <laughs> serial dragon. Now I wanna do a serial dragon on a pile of Lucky Charms so I can do all the rainbow colors. But you are what you eat, so would the Lucky Charms dragon be all different colors? Now I want to do this. I want this to be a thing. All right, so, okay, I put my brown on really thickly there, and we're like, oh, no, have I screwed up? No, not really. Just grab a whole bunch of yellow and smush it in. And keep the brown pretty, uh, pretty close in this case, and you can also just kind of continue the brown down this way. So right away, by putting in this shadow next to Rocky, we're interrupting our uh, our endless parade of mustard, right? So we're already changing the color of the base just by doing this because we've introduced other elements and those other elements are taking up space on the surface. Now, the more of this mustardy color we cover up, the less obnoxiously yellow this is gonna look. It's great, yes. 
great. You gotta stay awake. More R's than that. Alrighty. So now we can kind of look at shading here. So you can see, if you look at the base, there are definite mounds of treasure. And some of these sides are fairly vertical. See, so you've got that cut there. That's where shadow is going to be in mass. And you're going to paint these in a mass. You're not going to pick out individual coins until you have these masses defined. So let's grab some of our rich leather and kind of put a shadow here around the edge of the treasure pile. And once again, as we do this, as we introduce colors that are not our original mustardy color, the color of the gold is going to change. And that's perfect. We want a very complex gold. It's going to be reflecting a lot of stuff from the environment that we can't see. To make it look right, it needs to not be a giant pile of mustard. Yellow mustard. It could be a giant pile of Grey Poupon Country Dijon because that is the king of mustards in my opinion. I can eat that stuff with a spoon. It grosses David out. All right, so we're using this. And it may surprise you eventually how little of my initial base coat I keep in play. A lot of it is going to get kind of complicated, right? We're going to lose a lot of it. But that's okay. We still got it there. I'm just going to keep um, bringing in a little bit of this because I like this color. I'm going to actually uh, use a little bit of around the edges of this darker shadow. This is another vertical mass. I'm gonna I'm gonna accentuate these mounds a little bit more in a minute. I'm just starting with this uh, little bit more of a subtle color, and then we'll work it up. So now it's starting to get interesting. Let's see. So we've got a vertical, a vertical. This here is another mass. And the the mounds. Oh, I've got a piece of curry fur. Um, the mounds that are more vertical on the sides, like this one, goes pretty, you know, it's pretty sharply defined, as opposed to the ones that are maybe a little bit more slanted. The more vertical ones are going to get a darker shadow in the end. And we want to put a shadow. We probably want to put a shadow around this mug, and we want to also put a uh, shadow around this dagger, just a little bit of one. So I'm actually going to take my black and brown and use it as a liner, get a thinner brush. And maybe thin down that black and brown a bit so that it's not quite as harsh. And put a little bit of a line, line shadow around the dagger and around the pearls. And because this is the point where I'm blocking in shadows, so I want just a little bit of a shadow around these things to remind me that they exist. This looks like it might just be a scabbard. Can't tell if there's actually, oh no, there's the handle. This also lets you kind of remind yourself of the presence of these objects to art, as it were, or objects to stabbiness, as uh, the dagger would be. There. So now that will remind you that you have a, a color accent, a potential color accent here. And also it'll probably, uh, I'll probably go with a, conf um, a contrasty metal. So since this is gold, I'll probably go silver with the NMM on the dagger. And I'll probably go partially silver with uh, the mug as well. The thinner you go with your black and brown, the nicer, the nicer or thinner line it's going to uh, draw when you try to do the shading. So, and it still is a much like walnut. It's a it's a good color to use for lining because it has very high coverage. So even when you thin it to the point where you can draw super thin lines with your brush, it's still very dark. Like so. Oop! I'll drop that down. So you can do super, super thin lines with a brush like this and paint that's thinner. But if your paint is very high coverage, you'll still get a nice solid line. And let's see, there's some coins kind of heaping up here. I'm going to 
do a dark shadow on the butt of this, uh, the underside of this drinking mug. Rocky has definitely raided a, a dwarven uh, domicile and gotten himself a dwarven drinking mug. Or went to Germany for Oktoberfest. Rocky could have done that too. For all we know, all of this is legitimately gained from Rocky's uh, travels. Maybe people just throw money at him because he's cute. He's like the opposite of Grumpy Cat. Then you can see how easy it is to just get these little lines in when your paint is this thin and you've got a nice a brush with a nice tip on it. This is actually a smaller brush than I normally use. I decided I was going to experiment. Uh, go back. I used to use a lot of very tiny brushes, but uh, I haven't for a while. I uh, have recently gone back to trying to use these little guys just to play with them a bit. Using small brushes, by the way, painting with, with um, quite small brushes, and this is a triple zero Da Vinci Maestro. It's still series 10 like I normally use, so it is very thin. Um, but painting with brushes like this is actually how I got better at mini painting, like how I got to a competition level. This was a key part of it because I found that when I painted with a smaller brush, it made me focus more on tiny details. It's a lot harder to just uh, blob over detail when you're using a small brush. So if you find that you're impatient and you tend to ignore small details a lot, uh, try painting with a small brush. It does tend to refocus you a little bit. It worked for me. It's all I can say. And if you already paint with a small brush and you find that you're maybe overthinking things too much, then try using a big one. Again, I'm just uh, kind of taking this opportunity to line my details here so I can... Whenever I'm doing kind of like intro intro work like this where I'm coming in um, and kind of setting up the areas that I'm going to put color on, this is a good opportunity for me to kind of just start thinking about what colors I might paint these things, right? Um, so for me, I'm just kind of, as I'm doing this it, and making it stick out a little bit more, helps me remember that it's there and helps me kind of be thinking in the back of my mind while I'm painting the rest of this, oh yeah, what color do I want to make that? And then don't forget the little string of pearls or beads over here. First outline around the edge of the beads. And if you want a more subtle shadow, you can take a little water right after you do that line and uh, try to blend it out a little bit. Turn it into a sort of wash. There, there it goes. Usually if you hit it right after you paint it and the paint isn't quite set, you can make it a more realistic shadow like I did. You can soften that shadow a little bit. The stream is buffering. Do a refresh, maybe, Carwin. Anybody else having trouble? Yeah, I think chat is just uh, just slow. People are watching and, and listening. Or people are zoning, like I would be if I wasn't teaching. <laughs> Um, my OBS is not indicating dropped frame rates, frame rates on my end, drop framed on my end. Fine yeah, we, uh, we're completely green on this end too. Hmm. I think I'm just, I don't know that I'm, I haven't been responding to comments, uh, Karinico, more, uh, that I've just been thinking of things to say, um, and an anticipating comments that aren't here, so... I'm just being psychic. You're not going crazy. It's all good. Because, you know, inevitably somebody's going to ask what size brush I'm using or what type of brush I'm using. So I may as well just come out and tell you before I even get the question. So again, I'm using some thinned paint here. So you can see here kind of why I'm painting in mass and why I haven't just done a wash. Let me see if I can get real close. Hold on. Get up here. All right. So if I do a wash, essentially, it's going to go like in the cracks and make everything dark, right? It's in short, it's going to outline every one of these little coins. 
But that means there's going to be a dark shadow around each of these little coins. And that's maybe not realistic, right? Because really, it, it wouldn't be that dark of a shadow. All of these coins would be lying pretty flat on each other. You wouldn't get a super sharp, crisp shadow around every single coin, especially not if you're looking at it back here. So that's why I'm choosing to paint like this and not do a wash to pick out those little details. And if I want to pick out a few uh, stacks of coins later, I can go in and put like a, just a very targeted little wash or glaze around the, uh, the edges of some of these taller coin stacks, you know, but I don't want every single coin outlined in the same dark color. I want, uh, I want it more to be like masses of coins with a big shadow. And then each individual coin might have a slightly lighter shadow, but I'm going to do that with highlights. I'm going to actually use my highlights to delineate individual coins and stacks of coins rather than using shadows to do so. Because uh, in my opinion, the shadows would be way too dark for realism if I did that that way. You're not crazy. Well, not about that, Karinico. You can always be, uh, can always be crazy in a different way. There we go. All right, so now we've got our shadows more or less set up, I'm going to say. Uh, maybe I want to go a little bit darker on these more vertical mounds. Like, this one is really vertical, and this one also has a, uh, goes up pretty uh, strikingly. So I'm going to grab my russet brown for this one. So now, essentially, see, now we've gone from two shadows to three shadows. So... Interestingly, instead of a triad, we've got uh, a mid-tone, three shadows, and one highlight. <laughs> but, you know, that's all right. You can go that way. There is nothing in the world that says you must have the same number of highlights as you have shadows. And when you start with a lighter color like I did, often you may not. So one, another thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm thinking about these masses of coins again. And you kind of have to look at them. This is, by the way, Margaret, the same sort of thing. I forget if it was Margaret or Francis who asked about um, gold dragons. But it's the same sort of process you'd go through if you were painting an NMM gold dragon. So you'd define, you wouldn't paint the individual scales yet, but you'd define the muscle masses, right? So this might be a shoulder and then you might put a, a shadow around the, the, um, in the, between the muscles, you know, and you might put a darker shadow under the chest, you know, things like that. So you'd paint that in, in bulk, but then at the end, you do have to remember to go up to white. All right, so I'm noticing there's like kind of a canyon of coins here. You can see there's a little bit of a shadow, so I am going to actually grab my rich leather and shade that. If you see any big dark cracks in the coins like that, do hit them. There's another one here. Because since those stacks of coins are standing up taller, there would be a darker shadow there. Got a little bit of wet paint in there that's keeping me from uh, getting getting it to be quite so dark. There. So now that's helping us even more. See, that gives us an even a, an interesting shape that we're bringing out there. So even though this looks like just a glob of coins, there are still interesting shapes that you can pick out by finding like kind of the stacks of coins versus the kind of the holes where there aren't a lot of... Uh, of coins built up taller and accentuating those things. This is just like any miniature. You want to find the details and accentuate them. So now I have a very interesting pile of coins here and I'll probably use this one actually um, to finish out my NMM. Just gotta look at, oh well, yeah, it's almost been an hour. Oh, Jimmy, thanks. Nine months. It's good to see you. Thank you for the sub. We're building thanks, up. Thanks, Jimmy, that's awesome. Yeah, we're building up to another AMA session with a giveaway, so every sub counts. I'm going to just dab in. I've got a couple more shadows here. There's a shadow there. Now our coins, see, that that's looking very interesting now. They're very visually interesting up here. And I can do the same thing down here. Kind of put some shadows uh, around these uh, areas that look like they might get them. 
working with rich leather and russet brown. I'm going to put russet brown actually around the out outside, I think. Makes sense to paint the rim of the treasure pile dark brown. There. And if I ever blur for a mess up, I can always grab my yellow. And come back in and kind of mush that together to soften that border if I got too harsh. Alrighty, let's see here. Um, there's a shadow back here I need to get. And a shadow up here. Pretty much just setting up all my shadows so that I can have fun with highlights. Highlights are fun. Highlighting the model is for me the fun part. Because that's where I really, really start uh, grabbing details. Alrighty, a little bit of a shadow there too. Just pretty much try to define all these little chunks of, of detail. Try not to think of them as OMG, this is driving me crazy. It's a lot easier to not get in that mindset when you're painting these things in bulk. When you're painting them as large areas. If you were trying to paint each individual coin, you would definitely be doing the OMG I'm going crazy thing in your head, right? But when you do it this way, you're not necessarily paying attention to any coins yet, um, except to, you know, sh except for shading. Shading is very easy. Um, you know, just kind of blobbing in some shadows where there are deeper areas. That's, that's pretty simple. Um, and it's giving you, uh, you know, a good reward that it's looking good. So this is a way to like get your stuff kind of settled in without, there we go. And we can t test our Rocky. Yeah, that looks actually really good. See so once you also have to also keep in mind that, you know, you're going to be covering up some of that. So although this may look really brown right now, once you put Rocky on there and his tail covers up that shadow, now it looks a lot more gold. Well, thank you. Thank you for gifting that sub planer. You're awesome. Alrighty, so now we've got, now we are to the point where we can start highlighting things, I think. I'm going to keep all my shadow colors open just in case, but now we can actually start picking out some highlights. So I'm going to drop some water into my, um, remember this is an NMM Gold highlight. It was just one drop of the color that we're using as our midtone, which is Ogre Skin 9459. Anybody who was at ReaperCon the year that we gave out the Dungeon Dwellers paints has this color. Or if you have ordered the monster skin colors, we are using it for gold today. It shows you how versatile this color is. Let's see here. Where is my bigger brush? Bigger mixing brush. Never want to take your tiny little fragile brush and use it to mix paints if you can uh, if you can avoid it. It's much better to grab uh, an old I keep my I keep old big mixing brushes around. This old this old flat is one of them. Alright. The spoon comes out. Excellent. So let's think about now. Now we got to think about, all right, our, uh, a lot of this, like he's, he's casting a shadow, but otherwise this uh, area here is facing uh, this facing up and we decided our light was coming down from above. So that means this whole area is lighter and it is, and this whole area is lighter and it is. So now we can start highlighting more to where these coins would be reflecting at the eye. So I'm going to pick out, I'm going to start at this point. I am really going to start picking out individual coins and I'm going to see if I get, if this is a little bit too much, but here's where you're going to start really reflecting light at the eye. And, uh, I'm also going to do a glaze after I set these up. So it's going to look very polka dots for a second. This one actually technically would have a highlight. So with this one, it's going to look polka dots and then we're going to glaze. Cause we still, we, the problem here now is that we want to pick out detail, but we still need to remember our masses of coins. So we're going to use this highlight minimum gold highlight to pick out details pretty strongly, but then we're going to glaze to bring that whole mass up a bit. So all these, and I'm just using the tip of my brush to kind of pick it out. And I'm only concentrating on the coins that are up higher. Usually I can also grab, if I find that some of these coins maybe got a little dark coming down here, like I could grab the upper edge of some of them 
or the lower edge of some of them to kind of pick out a little bit. Some of these would probably catch light on the edge that we may have painted dark. All right, so we've got kind of sparkly, sparkly looks. Now I want to grab some of this and make a glaze from it. Brush, grab, make a thin watery color that is really just like colored water. Glazing with light paints can be difficult because uh, if you if you let them dry at all and touch them, then you totally rip up a whole bunch. It's very evident that you ripped up a bunch of, uh, of paint. I'm just testing it. I usually, I can figure out usually if it's uh, pretty good, but I'll test it on my thumbnail for you guys. If you can see it just a little bit, it's a little hard. We'll put it on and see what it looks like. Now I'm going to apply this with a big brush because I want to kind of dab it and then uh, slurp it out. And I'm going to use a round brush for this one, a big round brush instead of the flat, because the, when I put this glaze on, it's going to be watery. It's going to go down in these cracks and I need to pull it out of those cracks. And for that, I need a tip. So I'm going to grab this going to put it over the whole front part of this paint, 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 even over into some of these areas that might've gotten some shadow, rinse out the brush, come back, kind of slurp some of this color out of here. We don't want this to dry. Remember we've broken our paint uh, because we added so much water to make it into this glaze, but we still want a little bit of it to color the underlying area and make it lighter and a mass lighter. So now we're bringing up and I can actually do this again. If I decide this back area, I need more paint and I've got a Kiri hair in the middle of my palette. No Kiri hair. It's definitely a Kiri hair. It's multicolored and dark and short. My dog is once again, contributing to my painting process. Okay, so adding a bunch of water. Once you've built glazes enough times, you'll get kind of get, if you're using a, a well palette like me, you'll kind of get to the point where you can see how it's kind of falling off the edges here and decide if it's thin enough. There, that's a lot of water. Yes, he will be a very happy Rocky. He'll have lots of gold, shiny, shiny gold. So I've decided that I need a little bit more light back here because the light, I mean, there would be a shadow under him, but I think it would, the highlight would go back a little bit more. See, we've got, we've got some area where we can see stuff here. So I'm going to take my highlight and I'm going to paint it back here over all these little coins. I'm not going to go quite as far as my uh, shadow right next to the Rocky, but I am going to paint it over the top. And then I'm going to come back, rinse out my brush quickly, squeeze out the water or tap it on a paper towel and use the tip to just get this stuff out so it doesn't pool there because it's going to dry weird if it dry, if it uh, pools because it's just so thin. So that has lightened that area. See, now you can see the light kind of, right? You can see where the light is falling and that's exactly what we want. We want that effect. Um, when I tip it this way, I can really see a, a lighter area that, that really is picking up the light now. Um, that's great. Awesome. Fantastic. We're, we're progressing. This is, uh, this is looking good. I can also come back, since I decided to lighten this back area, I can come back with a little bit of my mid-tone, which is thickening up a little bit because I left it full strength. I'm going to add a little water to make that stay good. So if I decide I want to really lighten some of these uh, coins back here and I've lost a little bit of my color, I'm going to actually mix kind of a brush full that's halfway between my Ogre and my NMM Highlight. Because I don't want these to be quite as bright as the ones out here, but I still want them to lighten up a little. And I'm going to start uh, just just highlight a couple coins back here with that mixture to bring them up. See, brought those three up there. It's not quite as bright as this, but we would have some highlights. So this is where you can have fun and pick out individual little coins that you feel like highlighting. Always think of it as fun. Never, if you, if you think of something as a trial, it's going to be a trial. If you think of it as fun and relaxing, I and mean, this is where you can get in your Zen zone, right? None of these coins are super hard to paint. They're just small. So, and this is a uh, tribute to uh, the Raphael um, 8408 size one. 
in that this is a huge brush, but I, it is, uh, has a super fine tip, as you can see. And thus I can actually use it to paint these individual coins just as effectively as I was using my triple zero. So it's not the size of the brush, guys. It's the tip. It's how the tip is. You could use a gigantic brush like this that's as long as one of my fingernails. But as long as it's got this awesome razor tip on it, it'll, it'll do these tricks for you. It'll set up and beg. And the nice thing about using a big brush with a, with a fantastic tip is that it carries a lot of paint. Like if you're using a brush that's got a big full belly like this, look at how wide that sucker is it's going to carry a lot of fluid. So that means your brush is going to be usable for longer uh, than a tiny brush would be because a tiny brush doesn't carry that much fluid. So the paint doesn't stay wet on your brush for as long, right? You see what I mean? And so using a larger brush like this, I usually don't dip it much in paint. You can see how little of it I've dipped in the paint, right? But what I'm doing here, and this is kind of key, is when I wet my brush, I'm just squeezing the fluid out, right? That means there's still moisture here. It's not wet enough to like change my paint consistency, but it is wet enough to kind of add a little extra moisture to keep the paint workable. So I am utilizing my whole brush. I'm just only putting paint on about a third of it. There you can see. Um, and because the rest of the brush isn't dead dry, this means that this paint is more likely to stay fluid for a little bit longer. Now, the more coins we cover up or change with our light yellow here, with our highlight color, notice the less mustardy we look. Like back here, we're still looking like American yellow mustard. Up here, we are not looking hardly mustardy at all. In fact, once I cover up these coins, we, we look much more complex and deep. You can still see the kind of um, ochreish tone under underpainting, but it's much more complicated than that, right? It's not just yellow mustard anymore. So really the key here is what I like to call surface control. And it's my term for it. I'm sure other people call it different things, but it's how much of the surface you keep a particular color is what color that thing is going to look. And so for me, for gold, I want it to be quite complex because it's reflecting a lot of stuff. And, you know, I don't want it to look like mustard. That's not how gold looks. So for me, covering up a lot of that mustard and giving it extra dimension by glazing shadows in and then adding some highlights on top of it doesn't totally bury it, but because it is now not taking up a majority of the surface, my NMM Gold does not look like mustard. So if you notice that you try NMM Gold and it looks like mustard, you probably are leaving a lot of your midtone showing. And you may want to just kind of glaze like a little bit of rich leather over it, or you may want to highlight a little bit more of it. How much of that surface you leave is what it's going to look like. So now I can continue to kind of pick out, and a lot of these little coins, the whole coin isn't going to be highlighted, right? Because it's the coins that are facing upward or and maybe a little out that are going to be catching the light and reflecting it. And some of these coins is just going to be the edge. So I can hit those edges and bring those coins out without painting the whole thing. So that means that my shadows will still be interesting. And down here, I noticed I've got kind of a deep area. I need to really add some russet brown to that. This is a really deep, dark area where I can't really see a lot of coins. So I want to add a pretty heavy shadow there. And we want a shadow here anyway by the rules of NMM, which if you recall, say that you should have a dark shadow under your bright highlight and the darker your shadow goes and the brighter your highlight goes, the brighter everything will, uh, shinier everything will look. So for any metallic, non-metallic effect, you do need to use a dark shadow and you do need to use a, a highlight that is really close to pure white, if not pure white. And if I find that I've covered up too many coins, I'll kind of throw some water in there There, that's good. So then that mass of coins is really showing up. Now I need to finish highlighting some of the coins around the edge here, and then we're gonna go in with pure white. Because we gotta go up to pure white, it's metallic. And this is a idiosyncrasy. I mean, it used to be the fashion when I was first becoming a good painter, it was the fashion to highlight everything up to, to white or off-white. 
And on 28 millimeter, that can work. But on a bigger model, um, remember that when you highlight something up to pure white, you're saying, you're making a statement about the surface. So you're essentially saying this surface is reflecting a lot of light if I'm, ref if I'm uh, you know, making it pure white in its highlights. It's reflecting a lot of light. So you really don't want to go up to pure white on a surface that doesn't have a bit of shine to it. Skin tones, you often go up to white because skin is oily, and so it does tend to actually reflect quite a bit. Um, but, uh, but like things like taking every bit of cloth up to white, definitely not a uh, priority there. Those surfaces would probably be more dull. Uh, you don't take like dirty boots up to white, but you do take shiny boots up to white. If you're doing like patent leather black, absolutely you're going to go from black to white on that boot. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. So... You always, when, when judging how high to take your highlights, think about the surface. Think about would it reflect. Getting a bunch of these little coins here. You know, is it shiny at all? Is it reflective at all? And I'm just picking out some more edges here. Now, when we bring the white in, doing the edges is going to get um, important. All right, I think I've got pretty much the things together that I want. So our, our, our treasure pile is looking pretty okay, actually. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Now we're going to bring in a pure white. Yeah, give it a try, Astro Squee. Give it a try. I mean, uh, you can use both for different things, for sure. I could be doing this on a wet palette, but I'm just so much more familiar with my well that I can do it a lot more efficiently on a well. And uh, if a little bit of your yellow gets mixed in your pure white, don't worry about it. If we were doing rocky and everything was an orange light or a colored light, then we would definitely have to work that in. For example, if Rocky was in a blue lit setting, where let's say he was uh, in a big cavern, but there's like blue, a blue reflection or, or filtered light coming in from above, then we would actually be using a little bit of blue in our highlight color on these. So whatever, when you're reflecting, when you're using a highlight to show reflective light and you know you have a color of light, then you need to use that color in your highlights. So if you're doing like torchlight, every, your highlights are going to be orangey yellow, even if it's just a little... So now I'm going to, I'm just mostly, I'm not going to be painting any coin directly white, but I am going to be hitting edges, especially right here above this dark shadow. Because here is where, and there's a physics thing to this, guys. So you get a bright reflection whenever the light that's falling from above hits your metal surface and bounces toward your eye. So when you're looking at this at the angle that you would be, say, from slightly above. This coin here is like tilted so that if it were a mirror, it would bounce light right at your eye. At your eye. And that's why it's really bright. That's why that coin is almost white. Um, on a lot of these coins, it's just their edge that's tilted appropriately to bounce the light toward your eye. And so that's why I'm painting those edges. So you are actually thinking a little bit about physics here if you want it to look right. And I am uh, focusing mostly on this area because a lot of these coins back here, if they're going to bounce light toward your eye at all, it's just going to be this little tiny outer edge. But a lot of these coins, like that guy, is actually tilted toward you. So that light would really, um, that, that coin would really bounce light toward you. This, this coin would. The edge of that one would. This one might. You know, so kind of pick your coins. This guy would definitely do it. And now we're creating kind of this barrier of uh, lighter coins that are really reflecting the light just because of where you are in the room. This is why a lot of people will say NMM only works from one direction, you know, and they criticize it for that. In reality, though, if you think about it, especially with a model like this, with Rocky, it's not like you're looking at the coins butt on, right? You're not even really going to see them from there. There's an obvious viewing angle is what I call it um, for this model when his, you know, you, you're definitely going to be looking at him. Ah, and I'm, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. There we go. You're definitely going to be looking at him from this angle. And that means that when you're painting your NMM, you are well within your rights to have it look good from this angle. You know people are going to be looking at it from this angle. 
Um, since it's a slightly rounded shape, you can even have it look correct from this entire angle, I would say. So the argument that NMM isn't uh, a good uh, technique because it only looks good from one angle, um, I think is not correct. Uh, in many cases, the model is going to be viewed from an obvious angle. You can account for that in your painting. Uh, it may mean that you have to kind of think about it and keep it in mind to make sure you're painting correctly for, uh, for what it is, but it's not like this huge downside that people make it out to be. Most models have obvious viewing angles, usually the front and the back. And if there is an interesting bit of detail on the side of the model, like a shield, you can paint it accordingly so that it is, looks correct from the light source. All right. Got some pure white highlights. I'm probably gonna bring up this whole surface again with a slight glaze. Cause I think I need just a little bit around there. This is obviously not a super, super easy technique. Um, one should not be surprised. We are painting an entire base NMM. Uh, but it is not as, as you can see, it is not quite as crazy as you might think it is. So now what the, the horrible, terrible white glaze on the edge there, which again, remember if the light comes down, it's going to bounce towards your eye, quickly squeeze out your brush, quickly take some of this white out of these crevices so it doesn't dry weird. Glazing with white is really um, a delicate process. You want to leave enough of it. It's so opaque that you need to thin it so far. There. Now see how that lightened that entire area. And it even lightened it beyond our previous glaze. But it definitely brought up this whole area here. And I can do another one down here. I've kind of need to do a couple of glazes down here. First I need to do my pale yellow one, then I need to do my white one. Because this is facing the light, so this shadow, for example, is incorrect. So I can fix that with a glaze. I can fix this whole outer area with a glaze. Bring it up lighter, see? So that's just sitting there now. Now remember, we gotta squeeze out our brush, or you can tap it on a paper towel for this technique. Um, you just want a lot of the fluid out of it so that you can use it to wick off the flu excess fluid on this uh, surface. Boom, boom, boom. Just kind of dab it. Doesn't matter if you uh, kind of spread your glaze into another area, it probably won't impact it too much. So notice how that glaze is now brought up and, and added light to this entire area. And it was so simple. It was just like, put it over the top, dab it in, dab it out. And now it's looking much more in line with the gold up top. Yeah. Yeah, Twisted Oma, for sure. Yeah, the white glaze is super scary. It definitely is. I uh, I will totally agree with you there. Let me see if I can get... I'm going to take him off, actually. And refocus. There. It's a little better. So now you can see. And then we can go in, like I was doing here, and grab some white mixture and get the uh, edges of the coins that are kind of pointed toward the viewer. There. And remember where the tail is. We can, and that's why it's nice that we've got this shadow that we've painted on so we know where the tail is. So we're not going to touch this area down here. Because uh, we know there's a tail there. They don't need it. This one though could get a little bit of a better highlight. And so could this one, this one could kind of get a better highlight. Just kind of use your best judgment. If something, if you need it, if you think you need a touch of detail, put in a, you know, highlight an edge somewhere uh, just to break up stuff and make it look right. Uh, let's see here, a little bit more, I think down on these coins, this guy needs an edge. This guy is a coin. Sometimes uh, if you have trouble figuring out where the coins are, because maybe the details gotten a little muddy, just kind of freehand it on. This is a little muddy here, but I know there's a coin shape here, so I can just paint it on there. And there's another coin shape. The edge is there. Just kind of suggest them, you're fine. All it needs to look is close. It doesn't need to look precise, so. Get some white, because remember, we're also working with our white. Bright, shiny white. Mm. 
There we are. I think that's looking quite good, actually, all things considered. Could probably put a little bit more. I could mix a color that's halfway between my pure white and my uh, NMM gold highlight to hit some of these coins back here if I want them a little lighter. But as you can see, we still have this, this yellow mustard. Our base coat color still shows through, like here and here. It's still there, right? It gives us a basis for everything. But it's not overwhelming now. It does not look like I just painted the base mustard. So it's all in where you put it. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Boop. There we go. Keep your head on, Rocky. And get his little treasure pile there. I don't have his arm cut out yet. But there, so you guys can see how that treasure pile looks. As opposed to the part I haven't painted at all yet. So hopefully that helped you um, if you are, you know, looking to paint a large textured area with as, as a shiny surface, which, you know, could be uh, on something like these dragon scales too, right? Like you could choose to paint uh, Rocky himself um, as a gold dragon or a silver dragon or copper, or you could just want to paint in blue, but as if his scales are shiny or red, but his scales are shiny. Um, maybe we'll talk about that when we paint, uh, when we start red, I could essentially focus on this area specifically to show you that. Um, you can kind of see a little bit, bit of it in how the bones is shiny. You've got a, a bit of a, a highlight here on the top of this scale and a highlight here. Um, and then a dark line beneath it. So you can kind of see how that would work as, as far as making a, a shiny surface on the dragon himself. But anyway, so yay. Hopefully that helped. All right. Super. Yeah, we can do totally do that. We could put some lighter gold shinies like right up against here. In fact, that would be um, that would be an excellent way to do our under reflection because um, NMM also you don't see it on a flat thing like this, but you will often uh, see if you've got a shiny object, you've got a highlight and then a shadow, but then you also see light bounce back from the environment up here. So on Rocky, then yes, we can totally use this haunch as an example. Paint it red and do our do a shiny on it but then also make it reflecting the gold down here and we can also have a little bit of the red beyond the gold so totally do that yeah i thought a lot of people would have this mini it's always good i mean they're so cute and this is a this is a great cute one um maybe i'll do dragon eyes too because he's a great subject for dragon eyes because he's got such big ones but we'll see. We'll just we'll just keep working on this model. I probably for the rest of the week. There's a lot I can show on him to teach. So, so yeah. There you go, guys. NMM treasure pile. Ta-da! So yeah. All right, Justin. Do we have anybody to raid today? I am glad you asked. We actually uh, are going to be raiding our uh, neighborhood friendly uh, body painter. She's oh, doing good! An body oh, um, awesome! She, yeah, it's really cool. Yep, all blue, huh? Fantastic. Lots of blue, yes. Yes. Oh, well, go say hi to her, guys, because she's fantastic. She's always so cheerful and happy, and I just uh, and she's an awesome body painter. So maybe she can teach and you guys. Hmm. We managed to convince her to paint a mini. I actually uh, have been. Uh, I'm going to be in communication with her on Discord to, to send her some stuff. So. Oh, super! Awesome. She's going to paint some stuff. Yeah. That's fantastic. She's awesome. All right. Well, cool. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. And I hope you had a good morning. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day as well. Um, I'm going to go and try to get a bunch of other work done. Got a lot of Patreon stuff to work on today. And I hope you had a fantastic time. We will see you again tomorrow for stage two of Rocky. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Uh, we don't have any more shows for the rest of today, but tomorrow we'll have Anne again in the morning, and then we'll have Painting Platinum and Reaper Live, so you don't want to miss it. Tune in. Keep being awesome. We love you guys, and uh, tell Scott Eddie we said hi. <laughs>